to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and it is so fantastic that you are here with me for a fun film Friday. As you know, on these Fridays we talk about a fun film and then we do a fun related craft. Today we'll be talking about It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. But before we do that, if you like what you're seeing here and you want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also below each video click the thumbs up button. Thank you very much. So now we are on to It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Do you know this movie? This movie was around before I was a kid. It's been around many, 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 many years. And it's a classic. I know so many people who watch it every single Halloween. So what happens if you don't know the plot is Linus believes that the great pumpkin is this being that is going to visit the pumpkin patch. Linus writes him a letter and then goes out and waits in the pumpkin patch all night long on Halloween for the great pumpkin to arrive. His friends don't believe in the great pumpkin and so they go to a party and they enjoy their time there while Linus goes and sits in the pumpkin patch with his sign that says welcome great pumpkin. The only friend that he can actually convince to go and sit with him is Sally and who knows if that's because she believes in the great pumpkin or because she likes Linus. So what happens is that Linus ends up falling asleep and I'm not going to tell you anymore because I don't want to ruin the surprise if you don't already know the movie. But whether or not the great pumpkin arrives, I really love this idea of Sally and Linus sitting out on a fall evening in a pumpkin patch underneath the stars waiting for magic to happen. So in the spirit of It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, let's talk about some pumpkins. I have a couple here and I think they're really cool because they still have some of this vine attached. It looks like a stem here. It kind of is a stem, I guess. So I don't know if you've been to a pumpkin patch or not, but if you haven't, you may not know that pumpkins grow on vines. So these vines are what the water travels along to get into the pumpkin as they're growing. And there are quite often several different pumpkins on one vine. And if you were to want to take the pumpkin with you out of the pumpkin patch, you would have to cut this vine quite often with some really heavy duty scissors or tin snips to get the pumpkin out and then you can carry it off and take it home with you. Another interesting thing that you might not know about pumpkins is that they are considered fruits. A lot of people actually think of them as vegetables, but they are much more closely related to cucumbers and melons, and all of those are considered gourds, and gourds are fruits. They all have seeds inside of them. Another fact about pumpkins is that if you don't cut them, so you don't cut the top off, you don't cut a design in for a jack-o'-lantern, or you don't cut them to scoop out the seeds, the pumpkin will actually stay good for two to three months. So pumpkins which ripen in October and right around Halloween usually are not actually around at Thanksgiving. But they can be if you get some in October and then don't cut them, you'll still be able to use those for decoration on your Thanksgiving table. So enough facts about pumpkins right now, let's go ahead and get to our craft. We are going to make the pumpkin patch that Linus and Sally sit in overnight waiting for the great pumpkin. So here is my version of the pumpkin patch that I think Sally and Linus were sitting in when they were waiting for the great pumpkin. You can see here that I've even put some eyes on some of these pumpkins because I like to imagine that they were waiting for the great pumpkin visit as well. In order to make this craft, you will need a few supplies. You will need a nine by 12 piece of green construction paper. You will also need a four inch or five inch by 12 inch piece of brown construction paper. You'll need a small amount of brown craft foam. If you don't have this craft foam, that's okay. You can just use brown construction paper. You will need some orange pom-poms because what is a pumpkin patch without pumpkins? And you'll need some green yarn. I like to use two different colors. It's up to you. You can only use one, you can use three. This yarn will represent the vines. You will need some white glue, a glue stick, and some glue dots. That's a lot of sticking, isn't it? If you only have one and it's the white glue, that's okay. You can use the white glue for everything. It'll just take a little bit longer to dry. You'll also need a pair of scissors, and then you will need some eyes. 
I like to keep all of the eyes from all of my old projects in this green bin. Um, so I definitely have eyes to use. I will make sure to put some links below the video with links to all different types of eyes if you want to kind of mix it up a little bit. So let's get started. The first thing that you will be doing is cutting your brown construction paper into strips. These strips represent the rows that you would walk in in the field as you went to pick out your pumpkin. Now I'm just cutting straight down. I, there's no uh, right or wrong or rhyme or reason to what I'm doing right now. I'm just cutting these long strips. If, you, if it would be easier for you to draw lines and then cut along the lines, go ahead and do that. But there's nothing that needs to be perfect about these. They don't have to be exactly the same size as each other or anything like that. So do it whatever way works for you, but know they don't have to be perfect. And then after I have my strips, I'm going to go ahead and glue them down. So I just run my glue stick along the, the length of the paper and I stick it down. You can use white glue for this if you would like. It'll just take a little bit longer to dry than the glue stick, but that is totally fine as well. So I like to have four strips that just seems to kind of uh, go along with the size of the paper, but of course you can have three or two or five. It is up to you. Again, it is your pumpkin patch. What do you envision Linus and Sally sitting in on Halloween night? So now it's time to put our pumpkins in the field. The way that I do this is with glue dots. You don't have to use glue dots. White glue will work. It will just take a little bit of extra time for those pumpkins to dry onto the paper. If you are using glue dots, the way that I do it is I just take the roll out of the box and I don't, I try to keep my fingers away from the stickiness of the glue dots and I stick the pom-pom uh, right there on top of the glue dot and then I do have to use my thumbnail just a little bit to kind of pull up that glue dot off of the plastic and then we have a glue dot on the pumpkin and I just stick it down. So there's no rhyme or reason again to this as to how you want your pumpkins in the field. You can have a lot of pumpkins, you can have very few pumpkins, it's up to you. Maybe you've gone to a pumpkin patch recently and you want to recreate the patch that you were at. Were there a lot of pumpkins there or were there just a few? What do you think Linus and Lucy would like? Or not Linus and Lucy, Linus and Sally, right? What do you think Linus and Sally would see in their field? So I'm just going to put a couple more on here. Remember, I'm just scraping that glue dot kind of off with my fingernail after I have the pom-pom on it. Oh, here, I've gotten to the end of the roll. All right, so there we go. There are my pumpkins, and again, you can put them in any pattern that you want and any number that you want. So once I have this done, I'm going to go ahead and put my eyes on the pumpkins. I'm not going to put eyes on every single pumpkin, but you certainly can. You can put two or three or four eyes on each pumpkin if you want. What do you think your, pumpkin, your pumpkins would look like? Remember, this is the time of Halloween, so really, truly, any number of eyes would work, right? So the way that I'm doing this is I'm just picking up the eye and I'm holding it between my thumb and my index finger and I'm putting a little bit of white glue on. The white glue certainly is useful here. It helps keep everything stuck together. And then I, once I have the glue on the eye, I just stick it on. And I'm using different types of eyes because again, like I just said, it's Halloween and I feel like it's totally appropriate to have different eyes on different pumpkins. I mean, truly, in fact, we all have different eyes, right? So why wouldn't pumpkins be different just like humans are? All right, I'm just going to put one more eye here on the pumpkin. And again, remember, you can put eyes on any number of pumpkins that you want. Oh, it looks like my glue didn't quite stick there. So I put a little bit more on and then I stick it. This will take a little bit of time to dry. So once you have your eyes on, just try not to bump it and try not to move it too much so that your eyes have time to actually stick and dry. As you're waiting for those to stick and dry, you can take your brown craft foam or your brown construction paper and you can cut some stems. All I'm doing there is I'm cutting just a long strip and again, if it helps you to draw a line on the foam before you cut it, absolutely, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to cut my little strip into even smaller pieces, and these are the pumpkin stems. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pumpkins, so I need seven pumpkin stems. 
So I have four there, so we'll do five, six, and seven. Now again, remember the eyes are still drying, so we want to be careful around our uh, pumpkins, but we can still go ahead and put our pumpkin stems on as we wait for the eyes to dry. And what I do there is I just put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the craft foam or construction paper if you're using that. And I then just kind of stick it onto the top of the pom-pom. I kind of squeeze the pom-pom sometimes if it doesn't look like it's going to stick. Um, it seems like that just gives it a little bit more incentive to stick. That also kind of keeps your pumpkin stem facing up, which is, um, you know, the way you would see it or the way you would pick it up from the pumpkin field. All right, I have three more pumpkin stems. I am putting pumpkin stems even on the pumpkins that I don't have eyes on. Again, that's all up to you. That's such the great thing about art. It's all up to the artist, right? Whoops, my glue is falling. I need to be careful of that so that the glue falling doesn't knock off the eyes or the stems of my pumpkins, right? Okay, so I'm complete there. And then I think at this point I would recommend that you let your art sit for five or ten minutes as that glue really takes hold. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what to do after everything is stuck. So hopefully my uh, eyes and stems won't fall off, but if they do, know that if I had waited a few minutes between gluing and stringing that that wouldn't have been a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to cut I don't know how much, just, you know, about that much. And however much you want to cut is up to you. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit of glue, whoops, I had closed it. I'm going to put a little bit of glue behind one pumpkin, and that's where I'm going to start my yarn. So I'm gonna stick that glue in, and then I am going to just wind my yarn around the way that pumpkin vines winds. And they do get very windy sometimes, so it is totally fine to have them wrap around pumpkins or to have, you know, little curly cues. Let me see if I can make a curly cue there. There we go. I'm gonna wrap around there. And I don't feel like I have enough vineage yet, so I'm going to cut some more yarn. But before I do that, I'm going to stick just a few pieces down to the paper with the glue. I tend to kind of stick, to put my glue kind of behind the pumpkins, but you can do whatever. Remember this glue's dry, this dry, this glue dries clear. Wow, that's easy for me to say, right? Um, so, you know, if you get a little bit out and it's visible right now, it won't be visible once it dries. All right, so now I'm going to cut some more yarn. And I'm just gonna cut about the same length. I think this is probably a little bit shorter than the first one, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. I'll put some glue behind one of my pumpkins, stick that piece of yarn in it, and then very gently, I'm just wrapping around to make these vines kind of wiggle around the field the way they would in real life. And then again, I'm going to stick some glue on there just to make them stick to the paper. Maybe one more. I'll put that right there. And then I'm going to grab my other green yarn. I don't know, I think it's just kind of fun. You know, nature isn't, nothing in nature is exactly one color. So I am going to add some darker green to my pumpkin field as well. And there I'm just going to, to find a little place to stick my yarn in. And then I'll wind this kind of not on top of the first green, but you know, close to it, but it still kind of follows its own pattern the way that nature would take it on its own. So then once I have that the way I like it, then again, I just glue a few places to keep it stuck. And there we go we have a complete pumpkin patch right there, ready for Linus and Sally to wait for the great pumpkin. 
I would love to see your pumpkin patches. Feel free to post those on our Facebook page. And again, if you like everything that you've seen here, please subscribe to our YouTube page. We do lots of fun things. On Mondays, we do Masterpiece Mondays and talk about art. On Tuesdays, we do Test Tube Tuesdays, which are science related. We do Wanderlust Wednesday, which is travel related. Thoughtful Thursday, which is all kindness related. Fun Film Fridays. And then we also do a standout story where we talk about a really cool book and do a craft and wonderful women where we talk about a wonderful woman and do a related craft associated with her as well. I would love to have you join me for every activity that we do. I hope you've enjoyed doing this pumpkin patch craft and I hope you get a chance to watch It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and I hope while you're doing that you can imagine Sally and Linus sitting in your pumpkin patch waiting for the great pumpkin. Thanks so much for joining me this time. I'll see you next time. Thanks for kidding around with me. Bye.